in this video we're going to focus on how we can create our own arbitrary lines here and we're making it in such a way that we're familiar that we are familiar with a plugin so let's start to look how we can create multiple arbitrary lines so let's start to look at how to add multiple arbitrary lines in Chart.js. So the first thing what we need is to get a border template, which you can find here on Chart.js3.com getting started. And this specific link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, copy this border template. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand the code of this, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. So I'm going to paste that in there, and then I'll cut out this, put it in here. Save, refresh, there we are. Let's maximize the size and convert this into a line chart. 80%. And then we're going to say here, line, save, refresh. So once we did this, we can now start to work on creating a plugin to draw the arbitrary lines. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to put a comma here, going to say plugins, and then going to say here, the multi-arbitrary line, or... Uh, arbitrary line there we are that will be our plugin name and then in here I'm going to say uh, well, not like that I will say here first of all slash this plugin block and then we're going to say here constant this equals that then we say here, ID will be equal this and this later on we will be using because this will be very useful for us so then what I want to do here is when do I want to draw this? I want to draw this before we draw the data set lines here. And what I want to do, maybe these lines could be thicker. So let's remove this one here. Save that refresh. All right. Now, so we're going to say here, before the data sets draw, at that very moment, I want to draw this. So I'm going to say chart, args, and plugin options. Then what I'm going to say here, Object destructuring. If you don't understand what is object destructuring, I'm going to recommend the video understanding charge as object destructuring, which you can find in the well as well in the description box. So I'm going to put that in there. Make sure that this is chart, similar to the object here. And then go to CTX. And what we want to do here is the chart area. That's probably a nice one. Let's say top, left, uh, or let's make this bottom, and then left and right and maybe width and height we probably won't be using them all but just in case and the next here we have the scales say x and y so once we did this i'm going to say here ctx.save to save all variables above now what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing the item i'm going to give it a basic color so i'm going to say ctx.stroke style for the color of the line and this line will be gray the British gray. Next, what I want to do is I want the thickness of that line to be three pixels in thickness. So I say ctx dot line width equals three pixels. Now we have this here and let's start to draw the lines. So what I'm going to say here, ctx dot begin path because I want to create a new line, but that line should be disconnected from anything else. So it's a unique line and not connected with anyone or any other shape. So this is a new shape basically. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here ctx.move to which would be basically the position where we're going to start. And what I want to do is I want to start for example depending on the value that I would def define later on but let's say if I would do here on Tuesday from this point and then pointing up. And then later on we get another one here from Thursday pointing up or at least from this point here on Thursday which is nine, uh, the sales of 9. So let's start to do this. So we're going to say here, move will be X and Y variables. And then we're going to say ctx.line2. Uh, and make sure we spell it correctly, line2 with capitalized T. And this will be X and Y as well. So we need to define these. So let's start to define How do we get this? Well, we have the scales here. And what we could do is, for example, if I want to get on the X value, the Tuesday, which is index number one, because this is zero, because an array is zero based calculation. So we say here, x and i say dot and i'm going to use a chart yes command we just get the pixel for value and the value would be index number one for example which is tuesday so if i get this that will be the first one and then for the y what i want to do is 
I want to get in this position here, which is the 12. So what I can do here is quite similar, but then I can copy this. I'm going to say here, and we say a number 12, but this will be not x, but we say y. So we convert whatever number, value of number 12, will be converted into a nice value of pixels. Basically, that's what we're doing here. So once we have this, we could basically do the similar here, except for x, this will be still same. But for the y, what I want to do is then from number 12 here, I want to point all the way up to number 18. So we need to get here this. And we could say here maybe get value number 18, but I don't want to do that. Because what if we expanded the chart automatically or dynamically, then we have a fixed number. So what I want to do here is I just will grab here the top of the chart area. If I put in this here, you will see now this will work. If I say ctx dot stroke to draw the line, save this, refresh, and there we are. So what we could do here, maybe that would be very nice is to make a dotted line. So what I'm going to do here is just here above, and then we can say here, or at least just within here. And the reason why I'm keeping these separate, because we want to have later on, if you have multiple lines, we need to loop through this or basically create a function for it. But these here will be always the same. But what I will do here is ctx up. And then we say here, set line dash. This one needs to be here within, and I'm going to explain you later on why. If I save this, refresh, you can see here, this works nicely. But if you look very carefully, what is happening, you can see here these lines here and here, and even the circle lines here, the radius is having a dash effect. So basically this effect is bleeding over to other areas. And I don't want that. So what I need to do here, and this is for some reason absolutely necessary, we want to copy this, which is basically what we did here was six pixels, solid line, six pixels, white space. But now what I want to do is after the stroke, which is the drawing of the line, I'm going to say here again this, but then I'm going to remove everything, so it will be reset to a solid line. And you will see that now everything else will be solid again, except this specific line here. And that's what I want. All right, so final item maybe, what we could do just to clear it up very nicely is say ctx dot close path, and then we're going to say here ctx dot restore. Save this all, refresh, you can see you now, basically we're just undoing everything, we close the path or the close the shape, and then we just undo all the work we did, and that's it. So now what I want to do is I want to make this duplicate. What we could do here basically is this. We have here a few options. So for example, what we could do, we could copy paste this, but that doesn't make any sense. Because what we could do here, which makes more sense, is to say function, say you draw lines, and these functions here, we can just cut everything and put that all in there. Once we did this, if I save this, refresh, now the line that we have here has disappeared. And the reason why it disappears is because we didn't trigger this function yet. All we did here is basically say we have a function, but we need to activate this function. So I'm going to just put this here down, I guess. We can just put it down here. But I want to do two things. So... In here, we will have the values, and the values will be x and y position here. So I'm going to say here, x, or well, this will be number 1 for now. And then here, we're going to say number 12. So we know these items here. So what I want to do here now is to make sure that this is also properly aligned. Because this here must be dynamic for later on if we want another one. Because if I do this twice, but then this one should be on, let's say, number index number 3. If I save this right now, you will not notice really what happens because it's basically overlapping on the same item yet. Because these here are, maybe uh, these values are being triggered, but not on our formula here. So let's make it more dynamic. So I'm going to say x position, comma, y position. And then what I want to do is this x position will be here, here. This top will maintain the same. And then we say here the y position is this value here. So if I save this now and refresh, you can see here now, we have two different lines and then I realize that maybe we need to move this here as well or we can just remove the restore. Let's save that. There we are. So we just keep that one in there so we don't have to loop through this every time so it just reduces the code a little bit more. And at least makes the loading a bit faster. So we don't have to restore this one, that's fine. So what I do want to do here 
is the following because we have this but let's make this a bit more professional by giving the user like a plugin where we have where we allow them to do something so what i want to do is remember we have this here the id here and we have this plugin option what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this id and this id becomes now very important because we're going to say here after the skills as a comma we're going to put in here plugins and this is basically the object name and the object name is this so what we can do now is for example whatever this value is could be here and then we can do here an array so let's say here we're going to say here uh expositions yeah or expositions for example let me make this an array and let's say here one three and five so we have now an array here and this will be very interesting so once we have this comma what i want to do as well is the y positions and that will be also an array and this array will be three six and nine for example so if i save this refresh nothing happens but what i want to do now is i want to extract these values put them in here and also we can just loop through this here so how do we do this well basically what we're going to do here is we're going to extract them how do we extract this remember this plugin options this plugin options will connect with the options basically with the options here and then this id here recognizes which uh, object basically we want to pinpoint which is the multi arbitrary line that's this one here and then we can go in here so to get this point all we need to do here is because the entire code already understands this we're going to grab this for the options because it understands that this is the connected item so let me just show you console log I'm going to say this plugin options and then well if we can do console log here let's see what it shows and you can see here we get a whole proxy and once we get there well nothing i guess but what you can do here now is grab this expositions here put it in here save and now you can see we get the array which is in our options and this is very nice so let's start to work on this and what i want to do now here is to put in these arrays in here and every one of those what we have so basically i want to draw here three different lines and if they if i'm correct it should be three six and this should be nine and this one should be three and this one should be five if i save this this is what we want but of course what i want to do is i want them automatic with the values from here so how do we do this well what we can do here is a for loop because we have here an array when we get this array here which has an index of three over three values so what we're going to do here is let's grab this put it in here and say here for each loop and then what i'm going to do here double parentheses and then here a arrow function expression so within here i'm going to say this as a shorthand will be uh, x value for example i want to avoid too much the same name as x position here x this x that so i'm going to say x value and then of course what i want to do is the index value as well the index is just the index of this however you can see here we have this all nicely aligned so the index should match this immediately so we don't have any problems here and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut out this put it in here and then i'm going to say x value here and then for this one all i want to grab is basically the following get the plugin options dot y positions and then here we put in the index number that's it so once i did this i can remove this and we should have now three lines all right interesting we have no three lines here uh let's see what's the error so you can see here uh uncut error cannot on 102 so there's something wrong here with 102 uh let's see what's going on here so what it is is apparently i misspelled this from my bad so this should be the y position which is exactly the same here there we are so if i save this refresh now we have it all working and what i want to do next is let's change this color as well so we have this color here and maybe we want to change that what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say here uh line color and this line color we'll make just a string value and we can just say a gray or let's make this one whatever we have here let's grab one of these nice colors the border color of the first one put it in here so your user now can basically control the color here 
but how will we assign this here? Well, basically the same way. So you can see here we have this, and all I'm going to say here is basically the plugin options dot line color. If I save this, refresh, there we are, and now we have our line color nicely assigned here. If I change this, let's make this number four, save, and there we are. And this is basically how you can play around by adding more values into your array or sorry, into your plugin here and giving customers or your users control on this. So if you enjoyed this video, maybe you want to make a arbitrary line, but then you want them on hover effect. That is also possible. In that case, I'm going to recommend you this video here on how to add a custom annotation line on hover in chart.js.